broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar this week. My name is Tanya, and I'm the Marketing Manager over here at Shrucksoft Solutions. Just for those of you who are new with us today, our Star Solution MWF, or Metalwood Framer, is our automated Revit wall, floor, ceiling, and truss framing software for light gauge steel and also wood modeling. So during today's session, our senior technician, Christina, will be explaining how to place all of your framing and stud pack markers for light gauge steel and also wood within MWF. She'll be walking you through how to place ATS and cap track markers using MWF marker lines, how to add the H stud, interlock, and extra vertical stud packs, and much more. So just before we get going, I'd like to remind everyone that at the end of the webinar, we'll be taking a couple of live questions. In order to be selected, please press the raise hand button on the dashboard. Just please also make sure that your mic is working correctly. If you'd prefer, you can also ask, ask questions throughout the webinar in the questions tab of the GoToWebinar dashboard. All right, that's it for me. I'm going to hand off to Christina now. All right, thanks, Tanya. Hey, everyone, and good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, so for today, I thought we would just kind of primarily focus on the framing markers that come out of the box with the software. Um, so when you load in your data and you go into the marker manager, um, if you go into the wall options, basically all the ones that are listed as framing, and we'll kind of just work through these, uh, work our way down the list and go through each of their UIs. Um, and some of them are light gauge specific, some are wood specific. I'll highlight if um, if they're either of them, of course. But I figured it would be a nice little webinar today just to kind of review these. Since they were kind of nice custom requests that we've gotten over the years and may be useful to some of you for your everyday framing needs. So we're going to start with the first one, um, which is wood specific, but it is just to place the ATS um, tie rod system with Simpson. So I've just got a little image here, um, but basically it's placed by a Revit marker line that you can drag running through multiple panels. So you can drag it up multiple stories. Um, but essentially what we're going to be able to place is this piece of blocking We'll be able to place these jacks um, and we'll also be able to place the whole series where the rod would run through all of the panels. Um, so we'll see how to model that. The only little thing with this guy is that we're not really concerned about the actual rod itself or any of the bolts or plates that would otherwise come with the rod system. Uh, we're just going to focus on the framing for this marker. But this is something that does come out of the box with the software, and it's always something you could utilize in your panels. So like I mentioned, um, this guy here is actually placed by Revit marker line. So for anyone who isn't really familiar with our marker line options, it's a pretty simple tool. It's in the markers, so we're just going to go ahead and create those marker lines. And all it really does is place a Revit line um, that once the panel is regenerated, it'll have some information built into that line. So you can use it for blocking, for a whole series, and in this case we're going to use it for the ATS marker type. So they're pretty simple to add in. Once you kind of run the command with your panel selected, since we're focused on the ATS one, we're going to just place it vertically, of course. And typically, I'm just going to place one in my particular panel. And you can choose that offset from, let's make it from the end side of the panel. And then you just have to associate your stud pack to that marker line. So we just have the singular line, two feet from the end, and I've turned on this particular stud pack configuration. So once I say okay, then I get the marker line, and as soon as I regenerate that panel, that's where I'll be able to see the actual blocking and the jacks for that ATS. 
Um, but again, for anyone not super familiar, these marker lines, you can drag them. They can be moved. That's how we'll be able to run that rod system up multiple panels on different levels. Um, and you could also copy paste them, delete them with Revit, move them around. Once they're placed, you can use your Revit commands and move these guys however they need to move. Can even make it run short in this case. And when we regenerate, we'll actually be able to see that ATS populate in. So let's go ahead and open up the actual ATS marker and we can see what that looks like. So the marker itself, um, it's a pretty simple looking marker. And once you get familiar with it, it is fairly simple to set up. It's just to kind of know what each tolerance represents and how the actual tie rod system um, actually works. But basically, because we only have it spanning one panel right now, we haven't kind of dragged it across multiple stories. This is just our top condition. So this horizontal, just a six by six little piece of blocking. And then for our jacks as well, we have two jacks. That's right now clashing with the stud, but we'll move that over. Um, but I've got two jacks that I can set up with just basic structural column families. And if you did want to increase the number of jacks, you can set that to as many jacks as you need. Um, the other thing specific to the top condition is the actual height, so kind of where this blocking stops. Um, you can see that it's kind of independent of your line, so if your line sits in the middle of the panel, that's fine. I believe the average height for that rod system is about 4 foot 4, it's 52 inches. Um, so that's what the default marker is set to, but again, you can kind of always modify it and put it at its own height. And that's where that top piece of blocking will stop. So this is specifically for this top condition. Um, before we move into that though, let's just go ahead and fix this one up. Um, the main thing when you're placing the line just to start off is that it does have to be kind of centered in your bay or else you'll end up with something like this. So let's just go ahead and dimension this out just to see how much I have to move that over. There we go. So now it's about just about dead center in my bay and I can just give this panel a refresh now it looks a lot better. Everything's kind of perfectly in line in between my bay. Um, the other thing as well is that this kind of line I had initially, just something to note with these marker lines as you're placing them. Um, once they are placed, you can actually click on one and they do have properties. So you could always clear out whatever that line is associated to. If you wanted to remove it temporarily, change it out. But I could always go ahead and reassign my stud pack this way if I already have a marker line available. Again, give the panel a refresh. And wherever that line populates in this case is where I'll get that ATS stud pack. So the last thing to note just in the actual marker itself um, is that there were some options for studs and to control the spacing. So let's just kind of jump back in a little bit. Um, so at the very top portion here, once I do span that across multiple levels, I'll be able to also kind of strengthen the studs from the panels below and I can control the spacing. 
So I'll leave it to double studs and my spacing is at eight and a half inches for right now. Because this is the top condition like we were talking about, um, if I wanted to, let's say, apply this to multiple panels, can just have it stop around panel three. I can grab all my panels at once, hit the regen button, Let's also regen panel one for that particular line. There we go. Um, so I'm placing two extra studs in between that one bay. It's going to run across multiple panels. Again, wherever this line is running is where that system will run. And the spacing right now, that eight and a half inches I had set to my marker, is what's determining that width. So I know this is a little confusing, um, but let's just say now maybe we didn't want kind of triple studs at this point might be a little bit overkill. So let's bring that down to two. So I can go back in the ATS. Uh, I'm gonna take my studs and my jacks down to all be singular. It's got two instances, so I can update those right away. And then once I do regenerate, I still didn't touch the eight and a half inches. Um, so what it really does is just place that system. My eight and a half inch bay is still in place, but now everything is kind of a singular member. And because I didn't adjust my bay width, they are singular. They're not going to be flush with the studs of my bay anymore. So for this type of instance, if I did want to make it flush again, um, I would just have to come back into the marker one more time, set my spacing, which I know would have to be 11 and a half inches in this case. We'll give the panels a regen one more time. And as I'm sure you guys can guess by now, spreads out my jacks, the singular studs for my bay. By just respecting that 11 and a half inch spacing. So that's a little bit of how our ATS system works. Um, you can span it across, again, as many panels as you want. And the other thing as well, if I just go ahead and grab these walls, we'll show them in 3D. There is a whole series associated to this marker. So you can create your whole types I just created a three inch hole types within my whole series. So I've got that round three inch hole and that's something that you can associate to the marker and have visible in the panels. So that's our ATS option. Not too complex once you get the hang of the marker a little bit. And again, it's fairly simple to place uh, and might be useful for some of you on the wood framing side.
so now that we're done with the ATS, um, the next one we'll move on to is the cap track option. So this one is specific to light gauge panels. And again, it uses marker lines. But in this case, um, this was actually a custom request that custom request, excuse me, that we got a while back. Um, and basically, they needed a quick and easy way to be able to cap their studs and be able to control it super easily, um, because they had their floor systems connecting into their wall panels. They just wanted an easy way to add that cap. So if you're familiar with the deflection connectors option in the miscellaneous portion of the properties, um, it'll look very, very similar. But this guy here, it's was pretty simply developed to be able to add that cap. Um, and we've kind of expanded it to also have some other configurations. So it's not necessarily set to be just a cap. You can throw in a quick back-to-back -back piece. Um, you can box it out place it on either side, the hard side or the open side of the stud. So it gives you a few extra configurations um, to be able to add in an extra piece. So for the cap family, uh, which I'll keep the cap configuration, I'll go ahead and just pick a piece of track. Um, only thing just to keep in mind is that it's going to be a vertical piece, so we just need a structural column family. Again, these all come out of the box with the software, so you just have to make sure you've got a T column family loaded in, and then that's what we'll use for the cap track. Besides that, if it is, um, maybe capping on a different member type. If you're putting this on cripples specifically, let's say, um, or any other member type, you could always change the designation. So I'm gonna leave my cap track just as a typical vertical stud. Um, it's placed with marker lines again, so you could always associate it to a different line style if you want to. And then these are just some general position options. So because we'll actually have a marker line, um, if by default center of the cap track piece is gonna hit the center of your marker line, but if you ever want to move that vertically or put in a custom vertical offset, if you wanna move it laterally as well, different options just to adjust the positioning. Um, main thing is the actual length of your piece of track in this case, which I'll leave to the default one foot. And another little option down here, which may come in handy, is if you only want to cap specific member types. So if you only want to cap just your infill studs, let's say, um, it'll only cap when it crosses those specific members. I'm just gonna leave it to cap everything since I've got a pretty generic panel, but you can always customize the member type. So again, this is just placing by marker line, simple enough. It's gonna be a horizontal line this time. Very similar options to the vertical you just turn that on. I just want a singular line. And let's place it at two feet from the top. The stud pack in this case that we're gonna use is just the cap track. So again, we're gonna get the line. As soon as we give our panel a refresh, Then we'll also be able to finally see those cap track options. It's just hitting the center of the line. And again, if ever you wanna move these around, regenerate your wall, 
and it'll always snap to wherever your marker line runs. Very similarly, if ever you do want it to maybe cut short a little bit, you can bring in the line and it's only going to cap wherever that line runs. So this was a handy option, like I mentioned. Um, and if ever you did want to use it for something else other than kind of a cap track, you do have some more options in here. Um, you can orient them back to back. You're free to change the length. So it could be whatever length you want. Um, and there's also this offset from previous option in here. So if you did maybe want to quickly add in an extra stud, let's say, you can put in your length. And if I wanted maybe like a quarter inch between my two studs here, I can always put an offset from previous stud. That's what this little tolerance means. And it'll give you a little bit of clearance between your studs if they're back to back. So it's a pretty simple a uh, marker if ever you want to go in and play around with it for yourself. And lastly, pretty much all of our stud pack markers could always be converted into a subassembly. So if you are using subassemblies, you do have the option to single these ones out. Um, the other thing I should mention at this point is I am obviously kind of just using the defaults. Um, but if you've ever done an MWF training, you know we usually don't say to do that, so I'm not following my own advice. But always just make sure to leave at least a default version of the marker, so that way you can create as many copies as you need. And you can always at least have that default to revert back to if you need to start from scratch. It's just a little safety net that we always recommend. So you've always got a default to start off with. But any one of these marker types, you can create as many of them as you need. So that's the cap track option. And the next one after that, that we're just gonna look at is the extra verticals. Um, this is probably the most commonly used one. It works on both metal and wood, and it's just a quick and easy way to add in a stud pack uh, or some extra members in your panel. So this guy here, um, if we just kind of work our way down, you'll be able to actually see the marker in plan view. Um, so for the alignment options, that marker that gets dropped in, it'll look a little like a split marker for anyone who's used that. But if you did want the kind of member alignment to be directly centered to that marker, or you could shift it with the panel direction or against the panel direction. Um, it just means it'll be kind of shifted to the leftmost side or the rightmost side of that marker once it's dropped in. The other thing as well, um, if ever you do want to obviously dimension these stud packs, just make sure that the stamping is turned on. So when you run your shop drawings and you're, you have dimension strings for your studs, it'll just be included to dimension. If not, the dimension string will just kind of skip right over it. So just a, a little thing to keep in mind. Besides that though, it's a pretty simple uh, window to kind of figure out. You have left stud families, right stud families, and then you can put as many studs as you need in the middle of that marker. 
Um, so let's say I wanted to create maybe a back-to-back -back option since I've got a light gauge panel. I'm just going to duplicate this. I'll call it back-to-back. -back. Since I only need the two members, I'm just going to leave my middle member to zero. And then it's just a matter of setting my left family, my right stud family. Again, they can take on different member designations. Um, if you want the actual member to be something else other than a regular stud. For stud justifications, we're going to want it on the structural center line. So I'll leave it the same as our regular studs. Um, and then the only other option is to flip, or if you want to give a custom rotation to the members. So since I'm going to do back to back, I think it's the left member that I've got to flip or rotate 180, comes out to the same thing. But that's pretty much all I really have to do, at least in this case, to get the back to back. But if you are adding triple studs or multiples even, um, you do always have the options to turn on the middles. Or I could have also just very easily set these both to none. I maybe want it directly on the middle of my marker. So I can always just do two repeats and then rotate either of them 180 degrees. It really comes out to the same thing. All right, so let's see if this guy is filled in properly or if I have to rotate my rightmost family. Um, and then otherwise, again, this can be saved as a subassembly. So for this one in particular, there is a separate command associated to those markers. Um, and we've got the extra verticals option right here. I actually don't have anything selected at this point. So I can go ahead and pick the marker that I want to place, my back to back. I can say OK. Um, and then at this point, it's just going to prompt you um, to select the wall that you want to place this on. So I'll grab my wall. And then I can go ahead and pop in however many stud packs I want in this particular panel. When you're done, we can hit escape. And the panel regenerates automatically with that stud pack. Super simple. Um, once these are in place, you can move them around. It's very similar to a split stud. It has the same kind of logic to it. It can be moved around. Um, if you want to delete it, it's just a Revit delete, there's no special command. And then again, give it a refresh and it'll disappear. And the other thing that's nice as well, if it clashes with a stud that already exists, these stud packs always take priority. So there's not going to be any kind of clash and that info member is just going to be removed. So that's really all there is to know with the markers. Um, a little workflow tip just to keep in mind is that they could always be deleted and then regenerated, of course. But if you do want to place a new marker, um, they can't really just be copy pasted. The panel's not going to pick up the information properly. So you just have to rerun the command if ever you wanted to place more stud packs. Um, so to kind of avoid a little bit more clicking, I'll usually say put in as many stud packs, at least they could always be deleted, and it's a little bit faster to delete than re-add them.
So just something to keep in mind with these guys. And we've kind of already seen this already, but if ever you want to go back and modify any of these stud packs, if they already exist in panels or in the project anywhere else, um, if I wanted to make a change, it'll usually populate with this kind of update saying that there's already a few instances. Do I want to update? I just say okay. And then give your wall a refresh and it'll update. So there's no harm in updating if the marker already exists. So the last two stud pack options that we're going to look at today are both like age specific. Um, a little bit particular, they were kind of custom feature requests, again, that we've gotten. And the first one we'll look at is the H stud pack. And as you can probably figure out, it's called the H stud pack just because the middle member is essentially always rotated 90 degrees. So it's kind of a similar idea to the extra studs. You'll have a leftmost member, a rightmost member. Um, you can control as um, a couple of members in the middle. So you can add up to two members in the middle, control their sizing, their member type. Um, the only thing is that they can only really be rotated 180 degrees. In this particular case. Um, but the other thing this marker has is that it does have custom cutback options. So you can always adjust the cutbacks at the top or bottom. They can be the same and you can put in positive or negative values and it'll have separate cutbacks than just what's in your panel's properties. So I know it's a little specific um, I've seen this used only really a handful of times. Another one of our clients put in an HSS in the middle and then they kind of boxed it out with regular leg gauge off either side. Um, so that's another option where I've seen this. But the main difference with this marker um, is that it does come with a nested stud option. So this actually places a piece of track theoretically um, that will run the length of the stud pack and you could also associate clips to that stud pack. So again, I'll just kind of pick a piece of track. For the actual length, I'll put this to a foot. And then it just have our um, default connector families, but you can take these clips, of course, modify them create different sizes if you need to. And if I go ahead and regenerate this guy, let's bring it into 3D. Besides um, the two studs, you'll have that piece of nested track and it's automatically got those clip options. And this is something that happens at the bottom track and the top track as well. So both options are there. And it is the cutbacks in this case are automatically cut back to that piece of track. So this is an option, kind of a peculiar um, marker that we have. It comes out of the box. And the other thing as well is to place this. It's with the same extra vertical command and you just pick that H stud pack instead. So 
So last one um, on that marker list is the interlocking one. And this one is pretty self-explanatory. It's just to create some interlocking members. Um, it does kind of work with a specific family. So if you do want to have access to that family, I don't believe it's one that comes out of the box with the software. But it's a pretty simple marker. Um, you just select your stud family and then it'll interlock the two to give you a boxed configuration. So that's all the interlocked option was used for. Again, another kind of custom request that we had. Um, and it does work with a specific family type. So if it's ever something you wanted to look into, feel free to shoot support an email and we could always send you the family. But that is it for today's webinar, guys. Um, it was just a nice little overview to cover everything that comes out of the box in terms of the framing markers. So I hope some of you found this helpful. And if there were any questions, feel free to go ahead and ask them now. Awesome. Thank you, Christina. So as she just mentioned, we have a couple minutes left to uh, answer a couple of live questions. So I'd just like to uh, remind everyone that if you'd like to pose a question live, please raise your hand now by clicking on the hand icon in the control panel. Just also please make sure that your audio is working correctly. And just while we wait for any potential questions to come through, I'd just like to remind everyone that the recording of the presentation will, will be sent through tomorrow. As always, please feel free to share this recording with any colleagues. And if you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one demonstration or if you have any follow-up questions, um, our contact details will be provided along with the recording tomorrow. All right, I'm just going to take a look. Oh, we have a question from Hector. Hector, I'm just gonna go ahead and unmute you. Actually, never mind. I've just seen that the uh, question's been answered about the recording. So I'll just give it another couple of seconds. All right, then. Um, that looks like that's a wrap for today. So for any questions that have been submitted through the chat, we'll make sure to get to them as soon as possible by email. All right, we'll now be ending the webinar. Just want to say a big thank you to Christina and thank you to everyone who registered. Have a great day.